My mom wants a lighter cover built for her, for her stuff. She don't smoke, but she still wants one of these things. Because <laughs> she lights sage and things like that. And she likes something that's a little, got a little bit of ceremonial value to it. Something a little more than just a lighter. She kind of likes the work I've been doing, so I'm going to build her one. Let's have a little closer look at what we're going to do. My mom's pretty traditional, and so we're going to be using essentially the four compass colors. Now these right here are just my my starter beads that I'm going to use. And uh, we'll use black, which is the west. We'll use white, which is the north. We got to show some red here, which is the east. Two different shades of red, and then two different shades of yellow from the south. We'll be using just the same kind of a pattern here, although we're going to freestyle this, okay? Um, I got an idea in my head of what I want the pattern to look like. I'm not going to do just these straight bars, but I'm going to do something like that in the middle. It's going to look fairly similar, and again, we'll just uh, uh, put some leather on the bottom with a whip stitch and call it good. So 42 beads up and down, you know, if you were to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way around, 42 beads, 7 repeating patterns of 6. Okay, so if you were to count all these bars or all these white circles or all these guys up here, there's 7 of each. So I've already got our starter beads, 42 beads, all set up. And we're going to start laying down this little white portion right here leading up to the first set of uh, stripes. Alright, that's our first row done and you can see the seven black beads alternating with two whites in between as we uh, close in towards the start of our central stripes. We needed solid white all the way around for the next row and there it is. Alright, I got that last row done that we're starting in the split with the two black beads. All right, we've gone ahead and pulled out our colors, and we put in our next row. I don't, I don't put beads on while I'm on, but after every row or two, I go ahead and refit onto my lighter to make sure I'm not getting too tight. Feels kind of good when it's tight on your fingers, but you are gonna cry like a baby when those beads, when this, when you can't get it onto the lighter, or when you try to force it, it snaps or breaks beads or does whatever. So just take it easy. Uh, we laid down a few more rows, and I'm doing another fitting, moving right along. I started with the darkest red, like I said, and I committed to a direction here with this uh, most recent row. You see, i got to go this way now. Up until that point, it had been totally symmetrical, but this most recent row, I committed to a direction. As you can see, we're following pretty much the same line with this, but we've just, we've just gone off on a totally different tangent here. So one, we're not doing a fade, all right? Fades are nice, but they're, uh, uh, they say something different that we're moving. Here we're saying this is a very strong, we're gonna use all the color and we're gonna seal it off with the black and no color variation in there. We're moving to uh, uh, finish out this part right here. We made uh, four rows for this stack here and we're starting to, with these two blacks, we're starting to close off this guy right here. And what it's going to do is as we close this guy off, it's going to open up another one above it. Now, that's the thing, is that you can open up above it and you can go the same direction or you can go a different direction. I'm going to zigzag through this thing and we're going to see how it looks. That's, uh, that's been my plan all along, my evil plan to totally rock this thing differently from how I've done it before. The other thing is that as we as we go along here, you notice we're freestyling. We don't give a damn about the edges. We don't give it we're focused on this central thing. Okay, now it could be that you're sitting here thinking, well, maybe I want to freestyle all this, but I encourage you to do shit in the middle, you know, get that where you like it, and then don't worry about the edges. That can come later. <laughs> and you know what? I'm having so much dang fun. I'm going to go ahead and stack up a bit more and then I'll get back to you. You'll notice with my beads back here, I got all my colors pulled out that I was going to go with. And uh, 
I'm having a problem. Can you guess which color I'm not having a good time with right now? The answer was D. <laughs> this is some bitches right here. That yellow. Hmm. I don't know. Let me pull out some other yellows real quick. Now that's all four of the yellows that I have. This one I'm definitely using. I just love it. It's a corn yellow. Golden corn yellow. This is the other yellow that I had pulled out there. This is a Toho Sunshine yellow. And then this is this is really whitish yellow. It's a real pale yellow. Well, they all look like corn to me. It's making me hungry. <laughs> Except this color right here. It's almost like it's got a little bit of green in it when you look at it. And I don't know if that shows up on the camera, but it's of some concern to me. I want to use the right color. I could go with that. I could go with any of these, you know. There's no right answer. But uh, I'm, I'm feeling hesitant to use these for some reason. I don't know. I think it's because I'm definitely using these. And there's some... There's a color clash going on here. It's only when I look at these two together that I really have a problem with these guys. These two yellows don't really match. These two, they match. And this matches. So this is the Odd Charlie. So I think I'm going to back off and use these sunshine yellows. <sighs> Strange. And I think part of what's driving this, if you can believe it, is the relationship between these two reds here. <laughs> you know, don't ask me to explain my color choices. I'm showing you what I'm seeing. And, uh... I'll leave the rest for the psychologist. <laughs> Alright. So I'm using this yellow. This is a Toho Sunshine Yellow. And boy, is it sure having an impact against the black and that red. The interactions are pretty interesting. I like it. It's going to look really wild, especially the, you know, the, the yellow is such a bright color. It's going to interact with the black. And uh, that pattern that you can see in the red is going to come out. I'd also thought about doing like a dark red line and a bright red, red line here. Doing kind of a, a little bit of a fade to see what effect that would be. But in the end, I said, you know, these are such small pieces. Uh, that's a neat secondary effect. But it would have detracted, I think, from the primary effect. I wanted to get these different shades of red and yellow. And, and just have these solid blocks of color. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and, uh, uh, my string's getting short here, but I'm going to go as far as I can and maybe even string up. Oh, you see that? That's a naughty bead. I can't really use this bead. I have a special place for them. Yeah. <laughs> I return you back into the universe. I'm sorry that I wasted your time. Okay, just moving further along here. We're not under any pressure about how big it's getting. Uh, this string's about done. Time to tie it off. I'll just weave back two through, do a half hitch, do, go through two more, and another half hitch, clip it, and maybe melt it off or something like that. That's more than stable enough for this. Uh, you know, I've been using this guy for months now, and I break stuff real easy, and uh, uh, I haven't had a knot come loose. We're getting to where we have to start thinking again pretty soon here because we're going to finish out this yellow. Then it'll be time to dream. I think it's pretty clear we'll go with white on the other side. That's going to leave us a lot of room on the sides for more story. That should be cool. Alright, so we're cooking right along here. In the older lighter, we didn't form full hexacons. We kept them short on that one side. There's only two beads there instead of three to make a full hexagon on the white. Well, I think to do that, I'll need to do a, a really strong bead count and do a little math and figure out, well, what room do I have left? So we're getting closer to being finished, and we have to start thinking about the edges. The central part's looking pretty sharp. Um, I had originally um, formed a full hexagon here, 
so there was a, a white bead right there I pulled off that row after consideration with how I wanted to finish on the edges I want a flat line uh, with no jaggedness uh, because of the way that I want to finish so I backed up a little bit and uh, it's, it's kind of difficult to see because we're on a black background but uh, we pretty much got two solid beads here now the other thing that I've done at this point is done a bead check a count check we're shooting for 30 beads uh, that means that each each vertical line has 30 beads in it uh, we've got to be careful there because if we count here where you can see this one I'm pointing at it's up it's not that most outer edge all right and I counted and there's 20 and this one actually when you when you stay in that row it ends up as the outer edge okay so that's what I call like an even number of rows here our border is going to be four on each side plus a black and that will take us to 30 alright so we finished this guy off on the top end I've decided this would be my top I basically just did a line of color and then finished it off with the darkest of the yellows a line of that and then a line of black and I uh, so it's, it's kind of a fade it really kind of breaks I mean the colors there but it's not the same character is this part up here it, it is definitely a different piece it's a really a lot thicker border than I was thinking of having um, I really wanted one about half that size but that's how it works out I almost tore this up and said hey I, I could add in another another branch here and on the other side still keep as much white and then have a much narrower border uh, that's not how it worked out. It worked out like this. And so I live with it. This is the toughest, this is the most important fit is on the end that's going to be at the top because that's the part that the uh, lighter has to go into and out of when you switch from one to another. And when you put it in you can see it fits fine. Just snug, fairly decent. And uh, that's that's the way you want it. There's choices that work and choices that don't. And this, the yellow up top might work, but this stuff down at the bottom, it ain't making it. But I know whatever I do at the bottom, it's got to be like this. It's got to be this big. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, I know, Smokey. It's bad, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I know. Well, I tried something and it didn't work. Okay. So here you can see we've replaced the previous work with uh, this kind of start of another one of these, but instead of letting it flow out and cap off squarely, we clip it and then insert a border all the way around in uh, the lighter red that we used. It does seem a little bit short though. That seems like an awful long ways. Uh, that uh, extra two sets of beads, I think I might sew one more row of black onto the bottom and hedge my bet alright so we finished the stitch this other lighter that I did that's the exact same stitch but this is four months of use and that's what it will wear to if you can see it's not so obvious but that lighter is actually you know right down in there uh, whereas this one that lighter is flush the edge of the lighter is flush with the bottom set of beads there's really no play but this will stretch out that leather will stretch out and uh, it'll become like this with uh, use over time uh, what went according to plan definitely the middle part that was all what I wanted to do um, we tried uh, a couple of fades on the outside the top part turned out pretty good so we left it alone but the bottom part, no way. No. The uh, one color of red that was basically a pink did not work out too well. So we kind of did a little bit of this same pattern here, cut it off, and then uh, went with a very solid bright red band. Critiques. Well, there's an overall lack of balance. Past the middle part, that's got a good balance going on there and that you know it feels the same but definitely we get uh, asymmetrical when we come to the edges 
and part of that is because it's freestyle and we were drifting it and part of it was laziness and uh, you know you could pick on it forever and I, one could argue it's like well look if you're only doing a little bit of the thing you, you could have left instead of having a black bead there it could have been red or hey we could have done something else or you know it just goes on and on or hey you know why is this he uh, full hexagon down here but up top you cut it off like this and it's uh, missing that final bead to form the hexagon uh, all kinds of little things uh, like that but there's no any of those are arguable it's like well I didn't want it to look that way or it didn't feel right or that's not how it ended up I, I do got a little bit of a problem technically with these white beads they are of a different shape enough that uh, you know not only are they white but they're kind of different in appearance I could argue that that gives it you know this is a handmade item it's not supposed to look so super awesome -o. it's supposed to look handmade and <laughs> if that's the case it certainly does fairly decent piece I think my mom will like it. She'll like it more because she knows I did it. <laughs> and I did use more traditional colors. So there's the uh, finished article. Uh, the leather's still wet. I'm trying to stretch it out a little bit, and it has, but I suspect it's just going to have to be wear and tear before it will finally uh, reach up to meet the lip where I'd like it to be eventually. It turned out fairly nice. Uh, it's got some complexity to it, some kind of weird looking features, and uh, not what I'd planned, but not altogether bad either. <laughs> One thing I'm learning to see is that uh, when I feel a little bit of a twinge when I give it to somebody else, and I'm like, ah, oh, see? you really do like this piece because you don't want to let it go <laughs> and uh, I, I'm feeling that on this one I'm like I, I don't have to nail this right away <laughs> I can hang on to it for a bit you know and study it and uh, study it <laughs> it's mine now mom now <laughs> <laughs>